Now, the Israelites had to live in the wilderness for 40 years. And through these 40 years, they went through 42 campsites. Now, they were led by God to go round and round the wilderness as a result of their disbelief in God. Now, in the last session, uh, we actually studied the first 10 campsites from Sakot to Raphidim. Let's do a quick uh, recap. So what we learned from the last lesson, we learned that God fulfilled the covenant of torch by delivering his people from the land of slavery after 400 years. Now in the first part of the journey that we study at the last uh, session, we, we learned that God delivered his people through the crossing of the Red Sea, led them by the pillar of cloud and fire, provided bread from heaven and water, and refresh them and restore them beside the oasis. But despite all this, we, we also see God's people continue to sin of the sin of grumbling and criticism against the Almighty God and His appointed leaders. But the grace of God continues. The, the love of God continues to be steadfast and God was very patient with his people, despite of their disbelief and the testing of him. Now, in today's uh, study, we'll continue uh, to look at the events that happened at the next four campsite, okay, from uh, Mount Sinai to Mount Rigma. Now, the Israelites arrived at Mount Sinai, the 11 campsite, on the third month after they left Ramses in Egypt. The, the wilderness of Sinai is just located about six kilometers southeast of Mount Sinai. Now, in Exodus 19, uh, 1 and 12, uh, we, we see that it says on the third new moon, the third month, they arrived or they came to the wilderness of Sinai. Now, they remained there for about a year. And during this year, many events, key events has happened. Now, God gave them the Ten Commandments, the law and the pattern of the tabernacle. Now, in Exodus 31, verse 18, Okay, we see that uh, God gave the two tablets of the testimony of stone uh, written by his finger. All right, the Ten Commandments and the law. Now, at the wilderness of Sinai, God ratified a covenant written in the law and the Ten Commandments to guide the Israelites how they should live in the land of Canaan because they are his treasured possession. Now, the law and the Ten Commandments were meant to instruct the Israelites how to relate to God and how to relate to their fellow men in the congregation. Now, during this one year of stay, Moses went up the mountain eight times as instructed by God. And during one of those times, when Moses was on the mountain for a longer period of 40 days to receive the tablet of the testimony, which contained the law and the Ten Commandments and the design of the tabernacle, the people were waiting at the foot of the hill for Moses. They waited and waited. They were so impatient, wondering where was Moses after so many days of absence. So in their impatience, they constructed the golden calf to replace their God. 
Now, that was a great sin they have committed. And the judgment of God came upon them. Now, on that uh, sin they have committed, 3,000 of them died by the sword of the Levites. So what, what lesson do we learn from uh, the event that happened at Mount Sinai? Now, again, it is a lesson for us that the sin of idolatry which the Israelites has committed is still very much alive in us today. Okay? The idols in our heart can be easily replaced by other things. They can easily replace the lordship of Christ in our journey of faith. The idols of money, status, power, sex, fame, and even addiction can subtly creep into our lives if we are not close to God. Now, the Bible warns us to guard our hearts. The treasure that we keep in our hearts be can become our idol. Now, if we look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. He says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, our hearts follow our treasure. So if our treasure is in God, we will follow God. If our treasure is in money, we will follow money. So brothers and sisters, let God be the treasure of our heart. Let God be our idol. Now, the next campsite that the Israelites moved is uh, Kibroth Hativa. Now, it means, it means grave of the greedy or lust. Now, what a name to give to this place. Why was this name given? What happened at this campsite? Let's take a look. Now, after, after eating the manna for a year, the Israelites got sick of it. And guess what happened to them? As usual, right? Grumble. They grumble again. Okay, this is what it says in uh, Numbers 11. Okay, they have a strong cape craving. And again they say, oh, we have meat to eat. We remember the fish that we ate in Egypt. The, they call, that costs nothing. We have cucumbers, we have melons, we have leeks, we have onions, and we have garlic. And there's nothing all but the manna to look at. They get very sick of manna. You see how greedy they are? They have forgotten to appreciate what God has blessed them from the, with the bread from heaven. They kept going back to the past, thinking that they will be better off in the land of Egypt, in the land of slavery. Now, they sound that like they have regretted making the decision to follow Moses out of Egypt. Now, as we reflect on the behavior of the Israelites, we reflect on ourselves as well. Now, how many times we also are doing the same thing? Although, even though we may not say out, we keep going back. Sometimes we keep going back and think that, you know, how much pleasures of life, especially those sinful ones, that we have missed out when we follow Christ. Especially when times in times when our journey of faith get very challenging. Now, this thinking is devilish. This is of Satan. The devil wants to destroy us by distracting us to forget about the great blessings that, and salvation that God has actually bestowed upon us through Christ Jesus. <clears throat> So we need, we need to be careful of such thinking. So what happened to 
uh, how did God respond to the Israelites' request? Okay, so God sent his judgment upon his people. He sent them the quails, the birds, uh, uh, to their campsite. They were happily eating, but before the quails went down into their stomach, God showed his anger by sending a great plague. Okay, in Numbers uh, 11.32, Okay, you can see that God actually sent His judgment upon His people. Now again, what lesson do we learn from, from here? Now the Bible warns us about greed and lust. The Bible warns us to learn to be contented with the provisions of God. Contentment with godliness is a great gain, as in Timoth as what Timothy has reminded us. For godliness with contentment is a great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. For if we have food and clothing, with this we will be contented. So what gain do we what gain do we have from being in a state of contentment? Now we gain from the blessings of God. We gain from being able to overcome the temptation and the snares of the evil one. And brothers and sisters, we should be pursuing, pursuing godliness because godliness is a great gain. Greediness will only hinder us from the pursuit after God. Now, as they move to the next campsite, the 13th, the 13th campsite, Hazeroth, which means enclosure. Now, at Hazeroth, Moses married a Kusite woman, but his fellow uh, leaders, Aaron and Miriam, spoke against him. Now, both of them were very angry with him, with Moses, because they thought that uh, why Moses didn't consult them uh, for perhaps for his marriage, or God didn't speak to them concerning, concerning this, as they thought that they are equal with God in terms of authority. But we know in the eyes of God, Moses was a man with a special mission and authority. No man has ever get so close to God, talking to God face to face, except Moses. So Miriam and Aaron were leaders. They were there to assist Moses, but their authorities are not equal with Moses. Their authority was different from, the, from that of Moses. They have no right to be angry with Moses for the marriage of Moses to the Kusite woman. So God protected Moses, his servant, and punished Miriam with, for seven days with leprosy on her limbs. Now in Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 2, he says, tell us that there is no authority except God given authority, right? Those given by God exist uh, because God has instituted them. Therefore, whoever receives the authority receives what God has appointed. And those who receive will incur judgment. Now, this is a lesson for us, even for, uh, for us today. Now, we all may be saved by the same grace of God. But in the body of Christ, God did appoint governing authorities uh, within and outside the church. We need to respect the authority which is appointed by God. By submitting to authority, we are actually submitting to God. And conversely, by resisting authority, 
we are resisting God's appointment. Uh, and therefore, there will be a judgment of God for those who resist. As in Mariam's case, Now they move, the Israelites move on to the 14th campsite, which is Ritma. Now in, in, uh, in some observation, uh, Ritma was probably considered also near to uh, Kadesh uh, Barnea, right? Because after th 38 years, they came back almost to the same place. Now this place is already quite near, actually, quite near to the Promised Land, the land of Canaan. Now, at Ritma, uh, it was already uh, more than a year uh, the Israelites had left Ramses. So it's about time to enter the Promised Land. So there were 12 spies that has been commissioned, selected, and go out to, into the land of Canaan to spy, to spy Okay. Now, after 40 days of spying in the land of Canaan, the 12 spies came back uh, with a re with report to the leadership and also to the congregation. Now, 10 of the 12 spies reported this. They say, although the land of Canaan is really full with milk and honey, but the people were stronger than us, the Israelites. And some of them were like giants. So if the Israelites were to go in, into the land, they will look like grasshoppers in the eyes of the residents who is already there. Now such report frightens the congregation. So when the congregation heard about it, they will grieve with fear and they start, they start crying. Okay, they start crying. Now again, they grumble. They grumble against the leadership of Moses and Aaron, as we can see from here in Numbers 14, right? And all the people of Israel grumble against Moses and Aaron. Why is the Lord bringing us into the land to fall by the sword. Wow, we see. We see how these people again and again testing God. God has shown them His power, His, His miracles, and yet up to this point, they have never, never learned that lesson of trusting God. But, out of the 12 spies who went into the land of Canaan, there were two who stood up positively about their interpretation of what they saw, Joshua and Caleb. And this is what they reported in Numbers 14, 6 to 9. He says that the land which, the land which we passed through to spy, out, to spy it out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, He will bring us into this land. Only do not rebel against the Lord the, and do not fear the people. God is with us. What a different report. Uh, encouraging report as compared with the other 10 spies who saw the same thing as what Caleb and Joshua had seen. Now, Joshua and Caleb saw exactly what the other 10 spies saw, but they saw beyond that. They saw God behind the giants. Their focus was on God, rather on what they see. They have a different spirit, as what well. God declared them from the rest. They saw God beyond the seemingly challenging situation. 
Now, by now, God, of course, was very angry with them, right? For their deep disbelief in Him, despite of what He has done. Okay? Their sins were so perpetual, they continued to sin, and they remain unrepentant. Their sins continue to blind them from the compassion and the grace of God. Now, this is almost the final straw for them, from them in testing God. So God wanted to wipe them out completely and disown them. So we can see how angry God was with this, with the response. But Moses pleaded with God. Moses pleaded with God on their behalf. Very much like Jesus pleaded for us, right? <coughs> for our sins. But God is a just God. He needs to administer His justice and judgment as recorded in Numbers chapter 14, right? So God says, And your children shall shepherd in the wilderness for 40 years, and shall, <coughs> and shall suffer for your unfaithfulness until the last of your dead bodies lies in the wilderness. Wow, it's really sad, right? Really sad. The Israelites were so near to enter the promised land. God has been leading them for a year or more up to this point in time. And they are ready, ready to enter the promised land despite of their disbelief earlier on. But their perpetual disbelief in God led them to a death penalty. For those who are age 20 and above, they were all died. And they are not allowed to go into the, the promised land. So near to salvation, and yet in the end, is death. Their children has to live in the wilderness for the next 40 years because of their father's sin. And this is exactly what God has recorded earlier on, right? In Exodus 20, uh, 20 verse 5, you shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, is a, is a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the, of the children. Sorry, visiting the iniquities of the father on the children to the third and fourth generation. So the children continues to pay the penalty for the sin of their parents. So what can we learn from this sad episode? Now we learn that God is holy and for our redemption, God has to send His perfect Son, Jesus, to pay for the penalty of our sins. It is a high price that God has paid for our redemption. So that we who believe in Him should, need not be enslaved to sin anymore. We are free. We are set free from the bondage of sin. And this is what God has blessed us with, the great salvation. So as we reflect upon ourselves, we want to ask ourselves, how do I view the sins that I committed? Okay. Do I treat sins lightly? Do I continue to deliberately sin in my journey of faith? Let's take the warning from Hebrews chapter 10. Now, in Hebrews chapter 10, it says, For if we go on sinning deliberately, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remain a sacrifice for our sins. For it is a fearful expectation of judgment, 
and the fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. And Hebrews 10, 30 and 31, for we know that, for we know him who says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is fearful thing to fall under the hands of the living God. So this is a warning to us. So as we uh, close this lesson, let's do a summary of the four campsites that we had just visited. Now, first of all, we know that at Mount Sinai, the Israelites committed a very serious sin of idolatry. And as a result, <coughs> 3,000 of them were dead. Now at Kibroth, the Israelites committed the sin of greed and they tested God. And God's anger came upon them through the plague. Now at Heseroth, Miriam and Aaron questioned the authority of Moses, right? And was uh, punished, Miriam was punished with leprosy. And at Ritma, the Israelites disbelieved to trust God, to go into the promised land. They were issued a death penalty for those who are age 20 and above. Now, as we look at uh, what happened to these events that happened at the four camps, we see that God is holy. God is loving, but God is holy. Okay. God will administer his judgment to those who continue to defile against him. May the Lord help us. Let us pray. Father, we stand before you trembling. Trembling because we know how unworthy we are. If it's not because of your compassion and your grace, Lord, we will have wiped out by you long ago. We thank you for calling us and redeeming us with the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the high price that you have paid for our redemption. Lord, in our weaknesses, we ask for your strength. In our tightness, we ask for the renewal. Because, Lord, we want to live a life that is worthy of what you have paid the price for us, to live in worship of you and to honour you all the days of our life. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.